God has something very heavy on my mind and I don't want you distracted by standing up and trying to read along. So I want to talk to you about something on tonight. Our natural body, in our natural body, we have one very vital organ. That's our heart. Place your right hand over your heart. Do you feel it? If anybody don't, raise your hand so we can call the coroner. Anybody don't feel your heart? <laughs> what I want you to understand tonight as we start off the message is that our heart is beating there's blood pumping and flowing through our veins and into other vital organs. We don't always feel a heartbeat, though. And that's how God is. He's always present. He's always working. Even though sometimes we don't feel him, he's always there. He's always working it out for our good. I want you to understand something. Our heart, as it's pumping blood through our bodies, when the blood stops, we die. When the blood stops flowing, we die. When the blood becomes contaminated or poisoned, we have a critical situation at that point. We're very quick to call 911 and to run to a doctor, a nurse, or urgent care when we feel palpitations or we, when we feel like something's irregular. But spiritually, we're slow to go to the manufacturer. And that's something tonight that I want you to understand. My scripture reading, well, the title of my message is give me a clean heart. The message is coming from Psalms 51, 1 through 10. I want you to understand something, and this is why I needed you to sit down. During the time that I've been here at Going Hard for Christ Church, I've pretty much ministered um, as soon as I got healthy, I think that's an important thing. As soon as I went through the vision, because I came wounded, I came broken. I came as someone that had been um, abandoned in my life. I came as someone that was recovering from several relationships that had me discombobulated in my mind. I came from a background where there was drug use and alcohol use and promiscuity. I stand here before you today, still getting used to them calling me Pastor Francetta. God, you would use me? You would use me? This journey, this journey has been a journey. And it took me going through understanding my potential to understand, first of all, that I wasn't junk. And I wasn't that nothing and nobody that my mother has spoke over me. It took me going through understanding your potential classes to understand an example that the man of God used, Dr. Miles Monroe, when the man had the stump in his yard. See, I, I, I was that stump. I was that stump. But what happened when I kept coming to the house? What happened when I kept going through the vision? What happened was God started chiseling and he started carving and he started chiseling and he started breaking away the hurt, the abandonment, the sin, the habits. He started breaking these things away. And as he started breaking them up off of me, one day, 
They call me pastor. <laughs> they call me pastor. <laughs> so I want you to understand that what God needed from me was for me to understand that he loved me, that he favored me, and that I was somebody in him. See, leave it up to the world to tell us who we are. And, and, and it's something about people that they always want you to be less than what you already are. But see, God said that we're more than a conqueror. And he said that we were made in his image and that we were beautifully and wonderfully made. So I'm going to stick with that. The Psalms that we'll be reading tonight is Psalms 51, 1, and 10. Let me give you some background. David is the one that you hear about so much when you go and, and you go hear messages. David was crowned a king before he actually stepped into being a king. David was actually that one that they talk about was still out there shoveling sheep dung on the backside of the mountain. David was the one that his father didn't call forth with his other brothers. David was that one that nobody knew was favored by God. But David sinned. The 51st Psalm, 1 through 10, is a psalm that was written after David committed adultery with Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, O oh God. This is David. Because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sin. How many of us want God to blot out the stain of our sin? I'm in the right place tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Wash me clean from my guilt and purify me from my sins. See, what happens is that when we sin, we don't have nowhere else to go but to the Father. We don't have nobody else that can wash that skin, sin away and make us whole and make us brand new. When he's asking God to wash me clean from my guilt and purify me, Purify Francetta. Say your name there. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. See, we are stubborn people. And we get in trouble because we always dealing with our flesh, our mind, our heart, how we feel. I either want to or I don't. And that it is what it is. He's asking God, for I recognize my rebellion. He, he's, he's confessing with his mouth. See, that's what he's doing. That's what David's doing. And he says that it haunts me day and night. Now, let me tell y'all something. Anytime there's a sin against your sin nature, because we created in God's image, during the day and during the night. That's on your conscience. Whether you speak it out or not, it's on your conscience. David was having a moment because of the fact that he went and had an adulterous relationship with Bathsheba. So it, that was haunting him. So can you imagine, can you imagine when we take a life? I don't know about y'all, but can is there any kids in here? Can I be transparent? It's been years ago, but when God had called me and asked me to come to the ministry and to really give myself to him, man, this is going to be on YouTube. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was like hooked up with this guy. 
right? And we was getting ready to do something that we grown folks do. And, 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 and what happened was, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just draped over me. And I, I told him, I said, I feel dirty. He said, what? Because we locked, loaded, and ready. He said, what? But real talk. God's spirit convicted me to a level that I could not betray the Father. Lord, give me a clean heart. Give me a clean heart. God wants point. I'm sorry. I didn't finish. I'm sorry I got off because I had to tell it on myself. <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing. Okay. So David said, against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say and your judgment against me is just. Mm. One thing you have to understand about Old Testament times, God's judgment against you meant that you die. It's over. Death. So in David repenting at this point, now he's telling God something that God already knew. <laughs> For I was born a sinner. <laughs> and see, you know, sometimes we say, well, you know, God know my heart. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and do this because God know my heart. He know I'm trying. He know I'll be going to church. God, God know. God see me reading my word. God know that I'm not ready for this walk right now. Those are the excuses that we use. So David's telling God, well, I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. The word of God says that when we were in our mother's womb, that we were woven. But we weren't woven for anything evil. God's only going to weave us together for the good. For the good of the kingdom. And so now what, what happened was <laughs> once we get into this world and once we start saying, oh, I wish I was grown. I want to be grown. We start making grown folk decisions. And everything has to do with our flesh because that's all we're trying to satisfy is our flesh because see we haven't graduated to that point yet where we realize that we're in God's image we haven't gotten there yet because see being in God's image because the world is constantly pulling and tugging on us and it has its own set of demands we don't take the time out to flip these pages because see we got work the kids are in school. We got the kids got their practice. Um, I just started a new relationship, and he need time. Then I got to cook. Then I got to get me together. And then we were supposed to go somewhere. And, I, man, when I get home, I just want to take a bath and then go to bed. And that happens like Groundhog Day every day. And we don't have time to weave God in there. So the, the, the original pattern of us being woven in God's image doesn't happen because we don't know who God is. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins and I will be clean Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. See, that's something about going against when we was in the womb. We lose our joy. We lose our peace. We lose our mind. Because the word of God said, let this mind be in you as in Christ Jesus. Unless we read this, our mind is not registering in Christ Jesus. 
Our mind is registering in what we did in the world, on the streets, what we got involved in, whether it was a gang or whether it was promiscuity or drugs or whatever that may be, alcohol, whatever our crutch is. Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Whatever our crutch is. Because, see, when we're not woven in the image of God, we walk in wounded. We walk in wounded. We walk in wounded. Because we on a battlefield with no armor. Ephesians 6, 10, 11 tells us to put on the whole armor. Now let me rejoice. How many people rejoice even in your brokenness? Amen. 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 See, that's necessary, y'all, because we may not understand our brokenness. We may not understand even how we got there. But once we get in that broken state, if we can still just rejoice and praise God for the breath that we have in our bodies, if we can still rejoice and praise God for being in our right mind, he hears us. He sees that. And he cleanses us. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me. Y'all say that with me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. I love that version. A loyal spirit. Now, how is it that we can be loyal to everything dysfunctional, but we can't be loyal to God? <laughs> I, hey, anybody got an answer for that? Because <laughs> I don't know. Well, I do know, but that's a part of my past, and it'll take a whole nother time for me to tell you about it. I'll tell you no. Anyway, <laughs> what God is looking for in us in point number one, is relationship. When David wrote about committing adultery against God, when he wrote that psalm, it had nothing to do with what God didn't know. So see, while we out here making decisions and they're not pleasing to God, he sits on high. He looks down low. And all you're doing is closing your eyes and saying, okay, I'm going to think about you, boo-boo, instead of Jesus. Because in that moment when you're getting ready to sin, we got to take Jesus and mentally evict him, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, I know. <laughs> but y'all okay with me being real with y'all, right? All right. Amen. So one of the things that we have to look at is this heart issue. And so I really had a different message for tonight. And I've been preparing this different message. And, and I was like, well, God, why can't I do this message? He said, because my people have heart issues. And, 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 you know, we, we, we teach and we preach about the heart issue having to deal with money but the heart issues also have to deal with our stank attitudes. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> it has to do with our stank attitude toward leadership, toward correction, toward somebody calling you out. Because, see, I'm not bragging or boasting, but I had to put in a lot of work to get here. And because the word of God tells me, and I, this is one of my favorite scriptures that I stand on in my promise box, in e e Ezekiel 33, I'm your watchman. Because I've gone through that purification process, I am bound by the blood of Jesus on that cross that I must come to you in love, my sister, or as Tanya would say, sir, ma'am. <laughs> 
I'm bound by the blood to come to you and correct you. But so many times, because we have relationship issues that started when we were kids, I didn't like the way that mama talked to me or grandmama or whoever took care of me. See, I was abandoned and you don't know nothing about that. See, I was molested and raped and I've been hurt and don't nobody know about my secrets. I haven't told nobody. See, you don't understand what I've been through. You don't know nothing about that husband that I connected with that was abusive. You don't understand the demand that was placed on my life. You don't know nothing about the fact that my baby needed pampers. My baby needed stuff. My lights, my, I was getting ready to get evicted. You don't know nothing about that. You don't know nothing about my reasons for being who I am and why. So what you talking about? You don't want me to just act a certain way and be a certain way. What are you talking about? Why are you expecting this from me? I'm not happy. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we have to stand on God's promises no matter what it looks like. When the children of Israel approach the Red Sea, all they saw was water, and they turned around and they saw fire. They didn't know what to do until God went whoo and opened up a pathway. God is waiting to open up a pathway in your life, but he needs a relationship with you. God needs you to have a relationship with him. He needs you to get to know who he is. And he's found between the pages of Genesis and Revelation. And as you're reading, he's washing you. He's removing the pain and the hurt of whatever happened to you. I'm not getting ready to sit here and put a Band-Aid on your issue tonight. It's huge. It's major. But what I need you to understand is that nobody took you then to teach you how to be now. So you got stuck there as a child and still behaving like you in adult time out. I don't want to talk to you no more. Forget you. I'm going to change churches because you hurt my feelings. No, 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 no. This is what we do because we don't want nobody to tell us. We don't want nobody to see them cracks and crevices in our broken places because in my makeup and my hair and my nails and my suit and my tie and my car, I look good. <laughs> I look successful. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Aren't you good? God wants relationship with us. He must have relationship. I've said this before and I'll say it again. And I'll continue to say it. If you gave your boyfriend or your husband the same amount of time you gave God, would you still be in a relationship? Just asking. So we have to understand that there's work to be done. And God is not requiring much. He's asking you to read and apply, read and apply, read and apply. Because if we went to the doctor, we would say, doctor, I broke my leg and we would expect the doctor to put a cast on our leg. When we come to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm broken, fix me. We have to expect for the God, for God to do something different. And when he tells us to read this word, when he tells us to go to our sister and apologize because of the fact that we had that stank attitude, that's what he's expecting. And so we have to inspect ourselves. God said, examine yourself. We may not always understand why somebody gets promoted and we don't. I don't know if this is a general rule, but promotion comes from either studying or working overtime or putting in extra effort 
or sleeping with the boss. Y'all said I could be real, right? So we know that you don't want to sleep with the boss. Amen? Okay. <laughs> so what we've got to do is get the promotion from the Lord. We've got to understand how to get that righteous. What's that word? Righteous. I was going to say indignation. Is that the right word? Hmm. Yeah. I did that on purpose so y'all could remember the word indignation and righteous. Because sometimes we got to do something different to expect different results. I expect for you all to remember that word because I did something different. Understand the point that we're making tonight is for God to give us a clean heart. So don't miss that. Because we're broken, because we're hurt, because we're wounded, we're coming to God and we're throwing pieces at him. But I'm going to keep this piece. Because I don't want everybody to know about that piece. And I, I, that chunk right there, I need to keep that. But imagine that tree trunk. If the man hadn't chiseled away all of the parts to make that beautiful bird, he would have never gotten $600 for that piece of wood. And y'all that don't know the story, you will. And when you get in, understanding your potential and go through the vision... Because that's what we do here is try to help you to understand you're not junk. The relationship that God needs from you is one that it can't be duplicated. You can't mimic it. It has to come from a clean heart. And it's really simple. Really it is. God knew that David was going to sin just like he knows you are. All he's asking you to do is to forgive yourself, forgive others, and repent. It's real simple. That's what that blood on Calvary was all about. That's why our father sent his son in human form, and he was flogged 38 times and nailed to the cross because he knew he was going to keep sinning. But his blood covers the multitude of sin. Now, now, there is something in the word about habitual sin, and that's different. I want you to understand that any habitual sin, that's a problem. Because the word says that it'll, he'll turn your mind over to a reprobate. And you'll be stuck on stupid for the rest of your life. I'm just paraphrasing. Point A. Agape love. For y'all that don't know what the agape love is, it's just unconditional love. That's what David had for the father. No matter his sin, no matter what happened, he loved God with all of his might, all of his soul, everything that was in him. He talked to God regularly. He was in God's face all the time. God understands you need some balance. But see, you got to Matthew 6, 33, and make sure that you seek first the kingdom. And God said everything else will be added to you. There's so much anointing. I was sitting in pastor's seat tonight, and I was just like, oh, God, this seat is so anointed. You know, it's like, and, and that seat next to me, I kept it open with my coat for Mr. Mays to come whenever he arrives. It's a joke, y'all. Lighten up. <laughs> Talking about agape love and relationship. God is not looking for us to be fake or phony. He's not looking for lip service. Um, God is not looking for religion. And, and see, that, that's, that's like that part right there that separates us from our grandmama and our, our, our mama and, and different people that took us to church. Because I don't know about y'all, but 
when I went, everybody had lip service. Everybody was kind of, I don't mean to say nothing about people because I know they're going to see it on YouTube. But y'all know that y'all didn't do me right. Y'all know that y'all dropped me. Real talk. Y'all know that y'all didn't. Y'all wasn't applying this word like y'all was supposed I'm just saying. What about y'all? Anybody else in here? Get, let me hear you. And I got a church full of people that got dropped. <laughs> so understand this. The way that they taught us and trained us and did not follow up and follow through and they weren't accountable for us, with us. What happened was that we got dropped. What happened was that nobody came to care for us and nobody showed us how to get past that pain. And so because they left us waddling in that pain, we had to figure it out. Now, the message that I had originally was the man that was an invalid for 38 years on that mat. Jesus was on his way to the Passover and he just so happened to go through Sheep Gate and he walked up to this man that was an invalid. Now, y'all know Jesus knew he was there. Just like Jesus knew that y'all was where y'all was at when he said, go to one heart for Christ Church tonight. Jesus knew y'all was there. But here's the question that Jesus asked. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? That's what Jesus said. I'm just asking y'all, do y'all want to be healed? <laughs> he said, pick up your mat and walk. So, see, we can't, we, just, we can't do like Grandmama Nim did and just come to church and sit down and clap our hands and raise our hand up every now and then. We got to get up and walk. We have a new campus that we're getting ready to go to here on April the 7th. Jesus said, get up and walk. You don't know what your purpose is. That's okay. You're going to find it. Get up and walk. It's time for us to self-heal. Even when you go and have surgery, they cut on you. You go through the surgery, all that. The next day they say, what? That's when you've just been cut on. Your insides, is get up and walk. Because if we don't get up and walk, we full of gas. That's because they pump you up with gas to have the surgery, right? Amen. I'm not no doctor, nurse, or nothing. I'm just letting y'all know you got to get up and walk. Because if you don't get up and walk, it's going to be painful. It's going to be painful on you if you don't get up and walk. Because there are certain things inside of us that got to come out. And it's only going to come out when I walk up to my sister and find out what's going on with my sister. And when my sister's hurting or going through something more than what I'm going through, I'm going to be like, oh, how can I help you? Get up and walk, girl. Come on. Let's get this done. I'm going to encourage my sister because I'm a child of God. And that's what we do. We learn how to encourage other people. But Revelations 12, 11 said, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the words of their individual testimonies. Not because I'm telling your business, because you need to tell your business. In order to get the kind of relationship that you need to have with Christ, you got to tell some business because the enemy wants you to be stuck and hiding behind some stuff that don't belong to you. That stuff does not belong to you. In order to get free, you got to walk it out. You got to walk out your pain. You got to walk out your hurt. You got to tell somebody about Jesus and how you just walked it out despite. Because if you stay wounded, Unforgiveness only affects you. Don't nobody care that you mad? I'm sorry. Don't nobody care for real though. They don't care that you mad. They don't care that you in your feelings. They don't care that you don't call them. Sometimes if you don't call them, you're not asking them for nothing. So they rejoicing in that. Don't nobody care that you mad.
God's looking for an agape relationship. The word of God says, um, could you put Matthew 19, 14? I think this is, and I apologize. I told you I might go with the spirit a little bit and jump around. Matthew um, 19, 14. I don't know if she has that ready, but I'm going to flip over there. You got it? Okay. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Y'all don't get that twisted. Jesus spoke in parables. Y'all are the little children. Understand that there's a child inside of you that dictates everything that you do today. Every decision you make is dictated off the fact that you were a child. And if you had that childhood and it was all happy and all of that, we okay, fine. That's wonderful. I'm happy for you. But statistically, one in five women, I believe it is, has been raped or molested. I don't want to start counting. And I'm not going to ask y'all to hold up your hands. But because we are hurt, what we do is as damaged goods. And I'm not saying women, because I think it's one in four men. So this is not restricted to just women. But because the men have grown up in stature and they're strong and they've got these bodies, they're not going to tell you that they are walking wounded. They're going to react in anger and frustration and fussing and throwing stuff and, and not acting godly. Because that little boy trapped inside of him can't tell his woman because you're going to look at him a certain kind of way. Y'all have to understand, agape love goes real deep. This is not no superficial wound. Agape love goes down into the crevices of your soul, and it deals with things that's in your soul that is meant to kill you, that's meant to take you out of eternity with Jesus because you cannot forgive the person that hurts you. Agape love is what God requires. So while we're walking around here wanting to have an attitude with everybody that might step on our toe, we didn't do that in the club. They can step on our toe. They can throw liquor on in our face. And we finna go back up in there with the girls. And we finna handle some stuff. And it's real simple. But that was back then. I'm not talking about now. I'm going to the club. But let me just say, we keep going back. See, but, but when we are in relationships with other people, that's when we put a stop to how far we're going to let people benefit us. We cannot stop people from benefiting us. Point B is to be honest. We have to be honest with ourselves. I love the fact that Romans 8, 1 states that there is no condemnation in Christ. So it doesn't really matter what you feel like you have to do over and over again right now, which, by the way, now that you know better, it's time to do better. We can't hide behind that excuse no more that we didn't know that we had a heart issue. We didn't know that we were upset or angry with our brother or our sister in Christ. We didn't know that we were supposed to confront them because we are asking God to give us a clean heart. So there's some work to be done that God is not going to do. God has already opened up that door of forgiveness in your sister. So when you go to her, it's going to be just like the prodigal son going back home. The father opens up his arms and he welcomes you and he throws you a party. We've become so used to connecting to unhealthy relationships, unhealthy people. And these people have an unclean heart. So what happens with anything contaminated, the pus of discontentment 
will infect what we don't inspect because we never expect to be examined in the body of Christ. But God said that iron sharpens iron. So when that iron starts hitting that iron, there's going to be some sparks expected. Because you're not going to like what I have to say, and you may have to correct me, and I might be like, I don't like that. But you know what? I'm going to have to say, you know what, my sister, I love you and thank you, and I'm going to have to go home and process it for real. I'm just keeping it real. Because just because they put a title minister and pastor and all that on you, that don't mean that we nothing special like that. We have a different type of expectation, but we still have the same human emotions and feelings. And, and so things may come a little hard to us for us to process, but y'all pray for us, okay? We're going to pray for you. Y'all pray for us, and life is good. Amen? All right. Um. Point C, and I just want to go through um, this because of time. Assertiveness, showing a forceful attitude. That's what assertiveness means. That can be good or bad. Being determined. That can be good or bad. We can be determined that we're going to sin. And that's what we're going to do. And it's real simple. Or we can be determined that we're going to open up our Bibles. We're going to set a time, a window of time, where we're going to talk to the Lord. We're going to set a time, a window of time, where we're reading the word. We're going to set a day where we're actually fasting for food, from food so that we can crucify our flesh so that when that phone ring at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, I'm not going to answer that. Switch that button off and go on about your business. Or even if I have to pay something extra to get my phone number changed. Come to my house if you want to. I'm calling 911. Real simple. We finna get it done. You will not. See, we have to be determined, assertive, and confident about the same things that we are, because we're assertive when it comes to sin. So why wouldn't we be just as assertive when it comes to the things of God? It takes the same energy. You're just doing it different. This time we got to walk by faith and not by sight. So I may not know what it looks like, God, but I'm going to walk this out. I may not know what it looks like, but I'm going to go ahead and call this woman. And, and, and she said that she, I, could, I could talk to her. And, okay, God, I'm going to go ahead and call her so that I could get this, this pus up, uh, out of me. This pus is contaminating my bloodstream. I'm making the wrong decisions because I'm hurting. But he said he loved me, but he won't marry me. But he said he wanted me to be his woman, but he won't allow me to come to his house. But he said that he wanted me at his house, but he doesn't respect that I'm, I'm trying to keep myself. So, so, so the fact that I'm trying to live for Jesus and, and, and I'm making this decision to come to your house and you putting me in a position of where I'm about to lay with you and you're not covering me, you can't be my king. Because the king of kings and lord of lords said that if you like it, put a ring on it. <laughs> uh oh, uh, oh. <laughs> Y'all know he didn't say that, but you know what I mean. All right. I'm going to jump down to, um, no, it's some important things I need to say here. Um, we keep stepping back to our unhealthy past because we're still living it. We're still living there. And um, some of the things that happened as a part of my, my past was crack, cocaine, was a part of my past at one point. 
and and anybody that's ever been in that position, you you understand that um, what happens after you actually smoke the crack rock is there's residue in the pipe, and so we go back and get that residue when there's no other option at late in the midnight hour. That residue is what we gonna go and get out that pipe because that's what we have a desire for. We're not thinking about anything healthy. We're not thinking about anything that's getting ready to set us on a new path. What we're thinking about is something that's going to further contaminate us. Now, everybody's not going to understand this, so let me put it in your language. You may have been broken or hurt, or you may have been put in a position as a woman where somebody violated you and didn't understand you, but you loved it. You loved the way that they made you feel. So like residue in a pipe, you keep going back to that unhealthy thing because that's what you need in order to satisfy yourself. Y'all may not understand that. So let me say it another way. You might be a brother that has a woman that you are looking for her to give you something extra. But that comes from the fact that you were rejected. That comes from the fact that you were broken. That comes because God said you're a king. And if you're a king, then you need to be expecting a queen. It's real simple. We don't put substitutes. Okay? We don't like the little fake bologna sandwiches. I want the Oscar Maya, okay? We not finna do no fake bologna sandwiches up in here, all right? I'll pay the dollar extra. It's okay. Point two, and we're almost done. Resolve unforgiveness. And here's the part, y'all. Even with ourselves. We have to resolve the fact that we stayed so long. I'm sure a part of that, do you want to be healed? A part of that invalid on the mat for 38 years was he had to get up and wonder. Because it's not that Jesus went and said, Shana da buku. You know, he didn't go and say nothing. Jesus told him to get up and walk, pick up your mat and walk. He didn't pray no special prayer. He ain't got no mud and spit in it and put it on his, uh, he ain't done nothing special. He just said, get up. Matthew 43 and 48, could we post that? I'm almost done. You have heard the law, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say love your enemies and pray for those that persecute you. In the body of Christ, we're tearing down one another. We're not establishing relationships. 47, if you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? It's easy to be kind to people that's kind to you. But can you love somebody that don't agree with you? Can you love somebody that corrects you? Can you love somebody that's expecting better from you? Can you love them when they come to you and correct you? But you are to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. I remember a time when... Um, I was hurting pretty bad, just wounded from a relationship. And I'm flying down the turn to turn pike with a, a, a half gallon of Hennessy in the, in the seat, a glass of Hennessy in my cup holder, and had been drinking all day long. The Hennessy was about, had about that much in it, and I drank it by myself. I was hurting. I'm going about 90 to nothing in the car, boom, shut off. I had to pull over to the side of the road, and the popo came up behind the car, and he got out, and I'm like, whoo, I'm going to jail. <laughs> Let me start calling somebody. But the man came up, and he said, ma'am, he said, are you okay? Is there anything I can help you with? And I said, I just been drinking all day, officer. <laughs> he said, what? I said, yeah. He said, is it anybody that can come get you? I said, yeah. <laughs> so I made a phone call, and I had my friend at the time to come get me. And I was full, y'all. 
And so when he came and got me, he picked me up. We get in the car, and I'm driving. I'm driving. No, he's driving. Excuse me, because I'm still drunk. <laughs> he was driving. And so we get on the turnpike, right? And he going like five. And I'm like, what are you, why are you driving so slow? He said, because there's black ice on the highway. John 10.10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He knew I was going to stand here on this night and be transparent one day with y'all because y'all was on assignment to come here and hear this. The last part. When God can trust us, he will elevate us, but we must be ready to evacuate. Clear out things locked in the attics of our mind. Clear out things in our hearts. We've got to be willing to evacuate those things. We've got to eliminate every relationship that's not pleasing to God for a season. They can talk about you. But my mentor here, she said, you know, the best thing that you can do is free yourself from the opinions of others. And that's a.k.a. Pastor Madeline that I'm talking about. That was the most freeing information she could have ever gave me because I used to care. It's not that I don't care, but I care different. <laughs> but then I've been able to go back. See, I had to get healthy because I was broken, Remember? So I can't be walking on a crutch and you walking on a crutch because we're going to fall. So I had to come and get healthy and then go back and get some of the people that were broken so that I can pour what I've learned into them so that they can get healthy. Amen? That's what your assignment is, y'all, that don't know your purpose. Come get what you're supposed to get from the Lord and take it back to those people when it's your time. Because everybody's not ready for that. And, and God understands that. When you go to the hospital, he puts you in a room. You might have to be there for a few days, and they tell you to get some bed rest. That means that no visitors, bed rest, shut everything down. It may take you, like me, a whole year to get to a point where I can even communicate with the people that was in my past because I had to get some substance inside of me. And, you know, people don't always understand that God has a calling on your life. They have to watch you and see that you're walking this thing out and that you've actually successfully did it because people think that if you came from prison, that, oh, you just, that one of them prison ministers and it's not going to work for you and you'll be back in prison because, yeah. But that's what people do. But God said... You're a king. God said you're a queen. And see, when you're royalty, you're fitting for a castle. You're fitting for the kingdom. And there's kingdom decisions that we get to make. So JoJo can't come over and contaminate my spirit. Okay? Lucy Lou don't need to come because, see, Lucy Lou need to have that nickel between her legs so she's not committing no sins against God because what we're trying to do is walk this thing out. Um... The last thing that we have to do is we have to excavate. We have to dig a new hole and bury all the treasures that we learn. We have to plant the seed of what we get from the word of God. And we have to understand that it's a process, y'all. It's not going to be a I dream a genie moment where all of a sudden you wake up and you're going to be somewhere else in your life. Whatever process that you skip, you're going to have to come back to it. So if it's unforgiveness, you're going to have to come back to it. Even if they start calling you a pastor, a minister, a teacher, a leader, if you are wrestling with something, God does not elevate you. Let me rephrase that. You may get elevated, but you will not remain in that elevated status. You've got to be equipped to handle the position. The last thing that we need to do, and I'm done in Christ, is we have to be ready for new experiences. God is about to blow your minds if you let him. God is getting ready to set it off up in here. Just like y'all see this new campus that we got. This $3.5 million campus that we paid a th million, I think, for. That's nothing but God. But see, our pastor 
didn't take a salary for the past five and a half years. Our pastor walked the walk and flipped the pages for eight, over 18, 20 years, however long it's been. Our pastor has paid the cost. So God didn't give him just a regular church. God gave him a university. God gave him a campus. And guess what? We get to enjoy the fruits of his labor, stuff that we haven't even invested in fully. We wasn't there 15 years ago when First Lady was having a struggle with missing her husband because he's going hard for Christ. But we get to be there now to give the man of God some rest so he can go back and spend time with his wife, with his family, the time that he sacrificed for us, now it's time for everybody that's a covenant member of this church to step up. Get rid of your heart issues. Step up. Figure it out. Because you may not know what your purpose is, but I guarantee you, if you keep coming and you keep getting connected, God's going to put you somewhere because that's what he do. And the time is now. So those of you that need to repent for something, if it's a person in the building that you need to go to and ask for forgiveness, y'all don't sleep on this because tomorrow's not promised. Walking out that door is not promised. Your inhale and exhale is not promised. And you know what the sad part is? Understand this. Let me stop talking about you. If you don't do what God tells you to do, it could affect your kids. Now, if you love your kids, you want to put yourself in a position to where you get right with God. Because, see, now it don't make no sense. You putting a burden on your babies, the ones that was in your stomach for nine months, or maybe you adopted them, or maybe they came through marriage. But the Bible says it's better to tie a millstone around your neck to, than to intentionally hurt one of these children. God is good, ain't he, y'all?